Why is the geography of the Philippines so cool but dangerous? Seriously, just look at a map. The Philippines has one of the most unique shapes out there. It looks like someone designed it on purpose, and it's really beautiful. But why is this kind of geography dangerous? So 50 million years ago, the Philippines looked totally different. Today, it looks like this. These drastic changes happened because of tectonic plates moving around over time, splitting Pangaea into continents. Some of those land pieces drifted away and became islands, which is exactly what happened to the Philippines. Over the course of 50 million years, the geography of the Philippines kept changing until it became what we see today. Unlike most countries, the Philippines is unusual in a way that makes it unique and beautiful. Welcome to the Geography of the Philippines. Now the Philippines is an archipelago. What's an archipelago? Basically, it's a group of many islands. The Philippines has over 7,000 islands, so it definitely qualifies. But if you search online, you'll get different numbers. Some say 7,641 islands, others say 7,640, and some even say 7,107. The correct number used to be 7,107, but after 2016, more than 500 new islands were discovered, bringing the total to 7,641. That's actually great news for Filipinos. Imagine finding out you have an extra 500 islands in your territory. Now let's talk about size. The total land area of the Philippines is 300,000 square kilometers. To give you an idea of how big that is, if you put the Philippines on a map of Europe, it would be bigger than the United Kingdom, Ireland, and a few other countries combined. Even if you compare it to South Korea, you'll realize the Philippines is pretty big. So, while it might look small on a map, it's actually quite large compared to many other countries in the world. Being an archipelago has its perks, but also its challenges. Before diving into the downsides, let's bask in the positives for a bit. Picture this. The Philippines boasts over 7,000 islands. That means thousands of potential beaches, each one a unique gem just waiting to be discovered. It's no wonder tourism is a major player in the economy here. In 2023 alone, tourism brought in a whopping 480 billion pesos. That year, the country welcomed over 5.4 million international visitors. And why wouldn't they come? The stunning coastlines offer a different adventure for every tourist. You've probably heard of Boracay, one of the most famous beaches, not just in the Philippines, but worldwide. Yet Boracay is just one of countless beautiful beaches scattered across this archipelago, many still untouched by the public. But it's not just about the beaches. The Philippines is a biodiversity hotspot, and that's no exaggeration. Imagine over 52,000 species of plants and animals, half of which you can't find anywhere else on Earth. That's right. Half of those species are endemic to the Philippines. This makes the country a goldmine for biodiversity research and discovery. Take mammals, for instance. The Philippines is home to around 200 species, with 100 of those being endemic. One of the most fascinating is the Philippine tarsier, or Tarsius syricta, specifically the genus Carlito. While tarsiers can be found in Indonesia and Borneo, this particular type is native only to the Philippines. When it comes to birds, the Philippines boasts 600 species with 200 endemic ones. Reptiles? They've got over 350 species, 150 of which are endemic. Amphibians? 110 species with 80 unique to the Philippines. The marine life is just as impressive with 500 species of coral reefs and thousands of marine species, including over 2,000 fish species. Anyway, what makes this biodiversity so rich? The unique geography of the Philippines, of course. Being a tropical country with many isolated islands has created a haven for diverse plant and animal life. Many of these islands have remained pristine, untouched by human activity, 
allowing nature to thrive. Thousands of years ago, vast rainforests covered the land, laying the groundwork for the incredible diversity we see today. So the Philippines isn't just a tourist paradise. It's a crucial player in global biodiversity research, continually offering new species to discover and study, all thanks to its remarkable geography and rich natural heritage. But that was just the other side of the Philippines' geography. If that side gives hope, opportunity, and beauty, this other side gives danger and challenges to the people living in this archipelago. You see, this country is susceptible to natural disasters, meaning they are already expecting that every year they will encounter typhoons and other disasters. It is the norm here, and it would be abnormal if the Philippines didn't have a typhoon visitor within a year. And I am not exaggerating it. Did you know that, on average, the Philippines encounters at least 20 typhoons yearly, and mostly five of those typhoons are destructive and worse, super typhoons? Imagine living in a house where you expect 20 visitors every year that will try to destroy your house. That's normal. How horrible is that? But then again, that's a pretty normal situation in the Philippines. That's why over the years, they have managed to adapt to that kind of situation, facing disasters in a more prepared way. But wait, why though? Why has this country become the natural route for typhoons? Well, the short answer is because this archipelago is within the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire. If you look at the map, this is where the Pacific Ring of Fire is located. And as you can see, it is exactly within the Philippines area. For those who don't know, the Ring of Fire, also referred to as the Circum-Pacific Belt, is a path along the Pacific Ocean characterized by active volcanoes and frequent earthquakes. The majority of Earth's volcanoes and earthquakes take place along the Ring of Fire. And that is mainly the reason why the Philippines frequently experience earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. But what about typhoons? What is the connection of typhoons to this Pacific Ring of Fire? Well, I am not going to discuss every detail about that matter. But the science behind it is the fact that the Ring of Fire has many volcanoes, making the area hot or warm and a warm environment influences the formation of cyclones and typhoons. So that's the reason why the Philippines and other countries that are within the vicinity of the Ring of Fire frequently experience natural disasters. Because again, typhoons tend to travel on paths that are warm, and the ocean inside the Ring of Fire is warm. So, you get the idea. In other words, the Philippines will forever be the natural hub for typhoons as long as the Pacific Ring of Fire exists. But again, typhoons are not the only thing that this country needs to worry about. There are volcanic eruptions and earthquakes, again because of the Pacific Ring of Fire. For you to understand this matter, just imagine that this country has almost 300 volcanoes, and 24 of those are considered active volcanoes, meaning some of those volcanoes already erupted in the past and could potentially erupt again in the future. You see, over the past 400 years, the Philippines has experienced 44 significant eruptions. And by saying significant, it only means it brought terror to this country. Anyway, when it comes to earthquakes, the Philippines experiences thousands of earthquakes every year, although the vast majority are minor and go unnoticed by the general population. Still, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or the PVOLX, records seismic activity regularly, and their data indicates that the country typically encounters over 20,000 earthquakes annually. However, only a small fraction of these earthquakes are strong enough to be felt by people or cause any significant damage. And again, having an earthquake is pretty normal for the countries that are within the Pacific Ring of Fire. For the Philippines, these natural disasters are already part of their lives. But because of their resilience to live normally, they are able to learn how to face typhoons on a regular basis. They build their houses to be typhoon-proof. But sadly, not all Filipinos can afford to do so. Despite knowing that their country expects around 20 typhoons a year, they can't prepare their houses because strong houses obviously cost a lot. Anyway. Despite the challenges that their geography presents, Filipinos are still grateful for the abundance of their nature and the opportunities that their geography offers. And at the end of the day, the geography of the Philippines helps Filipinos more than it hurts them.